Benjamin Studios Publishing presents A Bomb Between a Husky and a Taller Skeleton by, Sco so by Stuart Heyman, read for you by the author. Chapter 1 Papyrus was a very tall skeleton who lived with his brother Sands, who now owns a little puppy named Kia. Papyrus did not like this idea because dogs make a big mess around houses. Luckily, Kia hasn't done that ever since she moved in. Another thing that troubles him is that Kia is Sans' girlfriend, and perhaps doesn't get as much recognition as Sans does. He wished he could, but he didn't have a girlfriend that could root for him, warm him up in bed, or even give him something he, that he wants. Love. Sure, Sans and Kia love him, and Sans is the brother and his brother, but sometimes Sans gets on perhaps his nerves because of his terrible because of his terrible puns. On this particular day, on this particular day, Papyrus was sitting on the couch reading the newspaper. Sans and Kia were taking turns chasing each other across the living room. Right now, it was Kia's turn, and she was giggling at the top of her lawns while chasing her boyfriend. Papyrus, just, Papyrus turned the page of his, news, of his newspaper, but suddenly he heard a giant thud. He turned around on the couch to see Kia on top of Sans. Kia had hurled Sans to the ground, but Sans was smiling and laughing. Why did you hurl like, Kia hurl to the ground? Asked the Papyrus. Was she angry at you? No, of course not, said Kia. We were just playing puppy, playing puppy pounce. Yeah, said Sans. It's fun when you're hurled to the ground because that's the point of the game. Oh, said Papyrus, suddenly frowning. Sans became confused. What's the matter, bro? He asked. I'm feeling sort of jealous, said Pap. You have a girlfriend and I don't. Don't worry, said Kia. I'll find one soon. But I just want, I just want an ordinary girlfriend," said Papyrus. "I want the one that's, that's kind, helpful, crazy, and has lost and has soft fur, just like you." "Are you saying you want a dog for a girlfriend?" asked Sans, shocked at the idea of his, bro his brother actually liking dogs for a change. "Yes," said Pap slowly but surely. "I have an idea," said Kia. "Why don't you talk, take a walk in the snowy woods? You might find a special someone there." "You know what? You're right," said Papyrus. "I'll go walk in the woods." And he got his mittens and snow cap on, opened the door, and went off on his walk. Sans and Kia continued the game of Puppy Pounce. Chapter 2 Papyrus started walking across the snow in a small heap. He was feeling very lonely. Maybe Kia was wrong, he said. Maybe there isn't anybody out here to become a, to become a girlfriend. But then, at the very second, he tripped over something and fell flat on his face. Ow! yelled Paps. He turned over to see what tripped him over. What is wrong with you? He yelled. He was blind from the fall and snow on his face so he couldn't see. Oh my gosh, said a voice. I am so sorry. The voice sounded like a little girl. A human, cried Paps. He got up and brushed the snow off his face so he could see better. But when he brushed out the snow, his eyes went into hearts of joy. It turns out it wasn't a human. It was a female, small, grayish lavender husky puppy. She was wearing a small hat, a, a black collar with a white blue pendant with white tree on it. She was also wearing a blue-green uniform with orange lining and a big sack was on her back. The papyrus was so speechless. Even though it was a dog, she was the most beautiful and cutest thing he has ever seen. But he suddenly snapped back to reality. It's fine, he said. I should watch where I was going. Now let's get back to talking about how adorable you are. Oh, said the husky. Why, thank you. I take that as a compliment. What's your name, little pup? Asked Pap. Everest, a member of the Paw Patrol, said Everest. Well, Everest, said Papyrus. Aren't you just the cutest little thing? As he said this, he, he stroked his hand all over Everest's little head. Oh, sweet mother of Arc, yes, that feels nice. She said as, she said as her head was scratched even faster. Papyrus was astonished at how much stuff the pup could do already. My name, is, my name is Papyrus, he said. Nice to, meet, nice to meet you, Papyrus, said Everest. How old are you? He asked the husky. Eight, said Everest. Well, I thought you were five, said Paps. I know I might not be able to say this, to do, to do this, but can I take you home? You seem to be lost. I am beyond the word lost, said Everest. I am misplaced. Don't worry, said Paps. Until we can find your home, Sans, Kia, and especially me will take care of you. Who's Sans and Kia? asked Everest. Sans is my skeleton brother, said Paps, and Kia is Sans' dog and girlfriend. How can you be in love with a dog? asked the little pup. I don't know, answered Paps. 
I guess it's kind of fun to do the impossible. With that, he picked up the pup who lovingly tucked herself in his arms and he carried all carried her all the way back home. Chapter 3 Papyrus carried his new girlfriend all the way back to his cottage, where, which he shipped to Sans and Kia. Everest was sleeping in his arms the whole time. When they reached the cottage where the skeleton bros lived, Papyrus rang the doorbell. The noise woke up the little husky, the little husky and she looked at her new friend. Where are we now, she asked. Well, we're at my cottage, said Papyrus. This is where Sans and Kia also live. Wait until Kia sees that you're a dog, too. Paps opened the door. Hey, Sans, Kia, he called. He called. I'm back. Kia was the first one to come to rain down the stairs. Papyrus, she cried when she saw a little husky in his arms. We did find a special someone. And she's a dog, too, said a voice. It was Sans. He had just come down the stairs. I'm pretty surprised you started liking dogs now. Well, Kia and Everest are an exception, said Paps. Is, the, is Everest the dog's name? asked Kia. Yep, said Everest. I like the name, said Sans. Yeah, it suits you, said Kia. It does, asked Everest, because of your fur, your pendant, and your hat and uniform, said Sans. Hey, said Kia, I have an idea of a game we could all play. What's that, sweetheart? Uh, Sans. Puppy pouts, cried Kia, as she hurled her boyfriend to the ground yet again. This made both Paps and Everest mid uh, laugh hysterically. Why'd you do that? Why did you do that? asked Everest mid chuckle. It's a fair game, said Kia. Puppy pounce. Here's how you play. You're a puppy and you pounce. Can I play two? asked Everest. Sure, cried all three of our new friends. With that, Everest jumped out of her boyfriend's arms and, and lunged after Kia, who ran away from her faster than her boyfriend Sans could. Come back here, cried Everest. Kia didn't listen. Instead, she giggled and ran faster. Suddenly, Everest barked and, and said, Net! A blaster suddenly came out of her uniform and shot Net right at Kia. Hey! cried Kia. She was now trapped. Kia! cried Sans. He ran towards his trapped girlfriend. Are you okay? he asked. Yeah, I'm fine, said Kia, whimpering. Everest, don't you ever do that again, shouted Sans. I was just playing the game, said Everest. The rule is trying to catch the person you're chasing, right? Well... Using a net to catch that person is both cheating and harsh, said Sans. Oh, said Everest, feeling a little sad. She went to what looked like a small bed. Kia, do you mind if I don't... Do you mind if I use this for a minute? She asked Kia. Sure, you can use it, said Kia, who was now out of the, out of the net. With that, Everest sat down in Kia's bed and started whimpering. The pirate has never seen someone so sad. Sans, he said to his bro... I think you hurt her feelings. Well, why don't you go talk to her? This is your chance to talk it out, said Sans. Okay, said Papyrus. I'll try. Chapter 4 Papyrus went over to the bed where Everest was sitting and kneeled down. Hey, Everest, he said. Are you feeling okay? No, said Everest. I thought you said these guys were going to like me. I thought you were going to like me. But after I shot that... Ned at Kia and Sans yelled at me. I felt like I'd been told a fib. I did not tell a fib, said Papyrus. I just told you these guys might be might like you because you're a dog too. Maybe it's happened because you're different? I guess you could say that, said Everest. Well, will they give me another chance to prove that I'm a good pup? I will, said Papyrus. I'll ask the others if they will too. And he went over to Sans and Kia. Sans is busy ticking, tickling Kia's paw pads. Kia loves her paw pads so much. She even tries to show, showing them off to say how many times, and Sans never gets tired of it. This time, Kia showed them off right in, her, right in his face. And to that, Sans got a feather and started tickling Kia's cute little paw pads. T Papyrus was stunned when he saw this after his talk with Everest. Sans, what are you doing? He asked, exaggerated. He's tickling my paw pads, said Kia, who was still laughing while she was talking. Finally, Sans stopped and Kia started catching her breath. What is it, Paps? asked Sans. Can you give Everest another chance? asked Paps. She's very sorry about the net incident. Of course she can have another chance, said Kia. And she jumped out over to, jumped over to the little husky. 
Hey, Everest, she said. Look at my paw pads. Kia lifted up one of her paws to show Everest. Kia's paw pads were dark, were dark pink. Aren't they beautiful? They are, cried Everest. They're beautiful. I have beautiful paw, pad, paw pads, too, and I love them to death. So do I, cried Kia. We have something in common. See? Said his to his brother. She's not so bad. Can I feel your paw pads? Asked Kia. Sure, said Everest. I'd love to feel yours, too. They touched, they touched each other's paws, and in a second, both of them sighed with happiness. Oh, your paw pads are so soft, said Kia. So are yours, said Everest. Suddenly, she put her paw down. Hey, Kia, do you want to see something? See what I usually do with my paw pads? Sure, said Kia. Sans, can I use your phone? Asked Everest. Yes, said Sans, and he handed Everest his phone. As quickly as he could, as she could, Everest dialed the number. She was gonna, she was gonna call Sky. Chapter five. After Everest hung up the phone, she went back to see Kia. So who'd you call? Asked Kia. I called my friend Sky and told her to come over. Said Everest. We do something pretty cute with our, with our paw pads. Suddenly the doorbell rings. Well, that was fast, said Kia. Perhaps, dear, can you open the door for me? Everest called her new boyfriend. I'm too small to reach the doorknob. Sure, said Papyrus. He opened the door and there he opened the door. And there was Sky. She was a small seven year old cockapoo puppy with a small pink uniform on her back on her back with a pair of wings. Uh I think it's for you, Everest, said Papyrus. Unaware of why he was she was here. Hey Sky, said Everest. Everest cried Sky. She lunged towards her husky and pounced on her in one shove. Everest giggled. She was glad to see her old pal again. Ready? said Sky, holding our front paws. First, said Everest, I'd like to introduce you to one of my New York friends. This is Kia. Kia just waved. Hi, said Sky and Kia said to each other. You look cute, said Sky. That's because I was born cute, said Kia. Now, what are you guys going to show me? Huh? Sky was confused. Kia wants us to show us show what we do with our paw pads. Or, when we, or, when we, or in this case, when we see each other, explained Everest. Oh, said Sky. In that case, she held up her front paws. Ready? She asked her friend. Ready, said Everest. Bump up high and from behind, said the two friends as they did high paws and a back kick. Kia was amazed. Hey, can I try to do that with you and Everest? She asked her tail wagging. Sure, me first, said Sky. And together, Kia and Sky did the same trick that she did, she did with Everest. Now it's Everest's turn. It was easier to do it with her than Sky because Everest's feet were way, feet were way bigger. Man, that feels good, said Kia. Hey, I heard clapping. What's going on here? Said she, said a voice. It was Sans. He had heard the noise of, of the clapping and lo- clapping paws and looked confused. Quick as a bee, the three dogs explained what they were doing and showed the trick to Sans. Sans broke out into hearts of joy. He was so happy that his sweetheart made a new, new friend. Then it was Papyrus' turn to see the trick. He broke into hearts of he broke into hearts too. All was well in this all was well in this little cottage. That is until a slow but loud grumble came from inside the cottage. Chapter 6 Everyone became stunned when they heard this roaring sound. Papyrus shivered. Oh no, just what we need. Bears! Bears? asked Everest. We don't get a lot of bears around here. Suddenly the roaring sound came again. Uh, yeah, hear that? cried Sands. This just made Everest giggle. That's no bear, she said. That's just my tummy. It gets kind of girly when I'm hungry. And she's hungry a lot, corrected Sky. Got any dog biscuits? Uh, said Sans. What? said Sky. You do own a dog, and that's Kia. And she needs to be fed. What are you going to feed her? Uh, Sans was in the most uncomfortable, uncomfortable position he has ever been in. Sans, what's the matter? asked Papyrus. Or he'll, she'll eat anything. There I said it, shouted Sans. Everyone was stunned and shocked. No way, said Sky. Everest will eat anything, too. She gets that hungry. You got that right, said Everest. What's for lunch? Yeah, said Kia. Double the servings for me. Papyrus smiled. This was a chance to show his new, his new girlfriend that he could make something but delicious. How about some, how about some spaghetti? He asked the three, three pups. All three of them did a cute little flip-flip in the air and said, Sure. Great, said Papyrus. I'll get to it. 
and with that, he ran to the kitchen to start making his signature recipe. Fifteen minutes later, he came back with one plate of spaghetti for Sky, one for Everest, and finally 37 plates for Kia. Whoa! cried Sky. Is that Kia's? Yep, said Kia. I did ask for double the servings. Well, this is really pushing it, said Everest. You can't eat all these. And with that, she jumped towards Kia's plates and started eating her spaghetti. She engulfed the three plates in, f in just five seconds. Kia and Sky just stood there and watched. They did not want to stop Everest from eating them because when a dog is eating them something, there is no stopping it. Especially when it comes to Everest. After one minute had passed, Everest had already finished off 36 of Kia's plates, leaving over just one left. Rivera's jaw was on the floor. Quite the jaw job, isn't she? Said Sands, just like Kia. Rivera didn't say a word. Everest, his Everest, has a huge appetite. Finally, he spoke. You sure have quite the appetite. Yeah, said Everest. And the best part is that my belly doesn't get all bloated and stuff like that. That's Everest for you, said Sky. I'll have some more, please, said Everest. With that, Papyrus went, went into the kitchen to make another patch of spaghetti for his pack of pups. Chapter 7 It's been almost four months since Everest and met Papyrus and decided to, hit, and decided to stay with him, Kia, and Sands. Everest did ask if she could visit her friends and former owner, Jake, sometimes, and Papyrus always said yes. Sky usually came over to the skeleton's house to have a sleepover. Every time she came over, Kia and Everest greeted her by saying, Bubba Pie and From Behind, as they did the little trick together. But nobody was as happy as Papyrus. The bond between the husky and the taller skeleton has been pretty big for four measly months. One moment made them stick together more than ever now. It was one ordinary day where Papyrus was once again, was once again reading the newspaper and Kia and Sands were taking turns chasing each other, but this time Everest and even Sky were in the house doing some just dance on Pax Nintendo Switch. It was tricky because they were dogs, but because they did the pup the pup the pup pup boogie back home, it was no sweat. This is a very interesting newspaper, said Paps. You almost never say that about our newspapers, said Sands. No, I mean it, said Paps. Look. And he showed Sands the page he was reading. The page was covered in orange paper and said, Join us tomorrow for the annual underground showdown. Join anybody who has a huge appetite. It starts at 2.20 p.m. Be there. Sands said the whole thing out loud. So, of course, Kia and Everest heard him and stopped what they were doing. They both rushed to look at the newspaper. No way, cried Kia. I have, big, I have a big appetite. So do I, said, cried Everest. I have a huge appetite. What is, all the commotion? what is all the commotion? asked Skye. She too got up to see what was in the, news the newspaper. You guys got to compete in that contest, she cried. I pr I'll participate too so I can do something with my friends. Then it's settled, said Papyrus. You, will, you three will participate in the count and the chow down. Then, after dinner, all the friends went to bed, ready for the big day tomorrow. Today was the big event of the big chow down. Cars were everywhere. People were everywhere. Sands and Papyrus had to put leashes on Kia, Everest, and Sky so they wouldn't get lost. The three pups didn't mind having leashes because they trusted the two, they trusted the two skeletons. Suddenly the bell rang. It was almost time for the chow down to start. Sands and Papyrus, and Papyrus let go of their leashes and let the three, the three pups get to their places. Each table was filled. Each table was filled to the room with hamburgers, hot dogs, marshmallows, French fries, pancakes, and other tasty meals. Both Kia and Everest were both so tempted to start, their lips started smacking. Then the host stepped to the microphone. Everyone, welcome to this year's underground showdown. All the con all the contestants cheered. I'd like to introduce our judges," said the announcer: Sands, Papyrus, and Flowey. The three pups walked away to their skeleton friends, and they went back. Suddenly, the bell rang, and the and the answer said, "Begin." The chat was underway. Kia already started gnawing on a hamburger, while Everest and Sky worked on their hot dogs. Five minutes passed, and the three pups were in the lead, with already eating all their hamburgers and hot dogs. Only Kia was the one with a huge belly, but that didn't stop her from having fun, so she continued to eat. 
Ten minutes passed, and the three pups already ate other marshmallows and french fries. All as if was just the pancakes. Kia took three pancakes and stuffed them in her mouth with one shove. Everest did the same but with five pancakes. Sky only took one and put it in her mouth. She didn't care about winning. All she cared about was seeing her friends happy and enjoying themselves. Suddenly the bell rang. The chat was over. The announcer announced that Everest had won and was in every single thing on the table. Kia got second and Sky came in third. The Lyres was so proud of Everest. He had been taking care of the Husky for four months and he had never seen the little pup so happy. And it was all things to him and his newspaper. Chapter 8 It's been three days since Everest had won the chat on and has been eating more than ever now that he, now that he, she has a huge eating skill. Papyrus made as many spaghetti plates as she wanted. But one day, Papyrus learned that Everest has very sensitive, a very sensitive nose. Almost anything can make her sneeze. Plus, she has superpowers. So whenever she blows or sneezes, ice-cold breeze comes out of her mouth and freezes anything in her way. Papyrus find, found, found this out when he, well, he, when he was reading the newspaper about Everest winning the contest. He smiled at every page. Everest was looking out the window with Sands. It rained last night, and there were grass. And there was grass all over the ground. How is this possible? Said Sands. We usually have snow on the ground, no matter what the weather. With science, anything is possible. Said Everest. Yeah, said Kia. Like me having a rainbow-colored stomach. You never told me that. Cried Everest. Shut the idea. It's true, said Kia. I have a rainbow-colored stomach walls. Because I love rainbows so much, the love got into my blood cells and into my stomach. That's amazing, said Everest. I wonder if my, stom if my stomach is, is a different color. The normal stomach color is pink. I want my stomach to be blue. Hey, Everest, couple Paris, let's go play outside in the grass. Okay, so the husky getting her uniform on. She followed Papyrus out the door. When she stepped out of the house, the grass came all the way up to her chest. It tickled her nose. Ah, ah, chew! She sneezed. In fact, he sneezed so hard, a blue breeze came out of her mouth and froze Papyrus. Papyrus was stunned. Get me out of here! He screamed, his voice muffled. Everest was stunned that she just froze her boyfriend, but it looked so funny he said she couldn't help her crack a joke. Excuse me, she said. Sands heard the freezing noise of Papyrus' yell, and he rushed outside. When he saw that his brother was frozen, he wanted to shout at the husky for torturing him. For torturing him. But instead, he simply said, Whoa, he has superpowers? Yeah, they kind of get on my nerves, said Everest, because of a very sensitive nose. Ha, ha, chew! She sneezed again. This time, she froze Sands. Unfortunately, he has uh, everything ran outside. Everest, what are you doing to my friends? She shouted. Sorry, Kia, said Everest. It's the grass. It's making my very sensitive sn nose sneeze. Ah, uh, ah, uh, chew! This time she froze Kia. What am I going to do? cried Everest. Then, quickly, like a lock snapping into place, she had an idea. Her friend Marshall had fire melting powers, so she could stay inside the cottage until the grass goes away, and Marshall could melt the ice containing her friends. She went back in the house and picked up Santa's phone. That way, she could call Marshall. And luckily, Marshall was the one that picked up. Hello? he asked. This is Everest, called the husky. I need some help. Sure, said Marshall. Do you need the, the whole crew? Nope, just you, said Everest. I need someone to melt something. Well, I'm your pup then, said Marshall. I'll see you soon, said Everest. And she hung up. Soon enough, Marshall came to the cottage. Yeah, that is quite the deal you sneezed there, he said. Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? No, said Everest. You always sneeze by accident. You don't do it for, for a reason. It was the tall grass that made me sneeze a lot. Well, it's going to take a while before they, they're totally melted, said Marshall. Please hurry, said Everest. Marshall went back outside and put his paws in the ice block that Papyrus was in. His paws turned neon orange and the ice started melting. The Papyrus was free of this ice prison. Well, thank you, Marshall, he said while he was all shaking his paw. Now, excuse me, I'm going go to Ever I have to go talk to Everest. With that, Peps ran into the cottage. Marshall went then went to work on Sands. As quick as a fa I flash, Sands was free from his pres ice prison. Thanks, he said. Now hurry up and get 
Key unfrozen. Will do, said Marshall. And he unfroze Kia with a touch of his paws. Kia jumped out of the unfrozen ice block. Thank you, Marshall, she said. You're so clumsy yet so helpful. It's what heroes do, said Marshall. Sam followed Kia into the cottage, and Marshall dashed back to Adventure Bay. Once he left, Sans frowned at Everest. It was an accident, said Everest stupidly. Oh, Sans, said Kia. Please give her another chance. She can't control her very sensitive nose. Sans sighed. Fine, she said. She can still stay. Who's hating dogs now, teased Papyrus. Sans was so furious at Everest for freezing him. And he was cross of Kia for trying to give if ever was more chances to stay. And finally, he was mad at his brother for teasing him about not trusting dogs when he when they both have literally have one for a girlfriend. In fact, he was so mad he stumped off to his room and slammed the door behind him. Chapter nine. Papyrus had never seen his brother so mad. I probably should go and ask why he's so mad, he said. Good idea, said Everest. It'd be probably better, it'd be better if you leave me out of it. Nice idea, said Papyrus. With that, he walked into Sans' bedroom and closed the door behind him. Sans, shouted Papyrus. He can't speak that way to a newcomer to our house. She's not new, said Sans, who was trying to stay calm. She's been here for almost five months. She had to accept that she's no longer new. Don't speak that way to your girlfriend, said Paps, because I've had her for a lot longer than Everest has, said Sans, his voice rising. It doesn't matter, cried Paps. She's my girlfriend and I care about her. Why can't you do the same? Because of you not liking dogs, shouted Sans. Well, shouted Paps, I do now. He covered his mouth when he, after he said that last part. Sans was shocked. You like dogs now, asked Sans. Papyrus was almost in tears now. Yes, he said sheepishly. Well, said Sans, that is some good news for me. Since I'm starting to like dogs now, asked Paps, can you please give Everest another chance? Please? Sans hesitated. He could give the little husky another chance and his bro would be happy. Or he could send her back to Adventure Bay and Papyrus would never talk to him again. Also, Kia would miss feet bumping with her and Sky. Sans shivered at the last part. Anything that would make the key, his Kia sad, make him start bawling. Finally, after thinking over for quite some time, he sighed and said, Fine. The virus actually hugged Sans when he heard this. Okay, you can stop hugging me now, choked Sans. You're kind of squeezing my liver. Oh, sorry, said Papyrus and let go of his brother. Sans and Papyrus walked out of Sans' bad bedroom. Kia and Everest were waiting in front of the couch. So, said Kia, are you going to give my, my new friend another chance? Yes, said Sans. I'll give him another chance, her another chance. Yes, cried the two dogs. But, said Sans, you can't do the following. You can't freeze us. You can't leave the, ho- the house without our permission. And you want, you want to have Sky over? You'll have to buy your own phone. Come on, said Everest. Buying a phone is not that easy. We're just going to have to deal with it, said Sans. I'm tired of having Sky's phone number on my phone. Everest sighed. Things have just gotten a lot harder for her, Kia, and the skeleton bros. Chapter 10 A couple days after the freezing, the freezing incident, Sans was beginning to trust Everest more around the house. Mostly because he keeps her and happy. <coughs> In fact... Sans has developed a DDD, a double dog date. For him, Kia, Papyrus, and Everest. They were going to eat at Grillby's. This will be LB Everest's first time going here. She was excited, not only for going to a new place, but also because she never had a real date before. Can you believe it? asked Everest, Everest your boyfriend. You're going to have a date with an animal you used to hate. I know, said Papyrus. No, yeah, said Kia, but I get to. Go on there and date with my sweetheart. Sans blushed. Aw, shucks. Everest was busy packing while Papyrus was packing his Nintendo Switch. In a couple of minutes, everybody was ready and walked out of the Skeletons Bros' cottage. Fortunately, Sans knew right where Grub- Grubby's was and was only a five-minute walk. Well, said Everest, that was fast. Yep, 
suppliers, me, Sans, and Kia have been here countless times, but I never get tired of it because I always order something different. Unlike Sans, he always orders ketchup. Speaking of ketchup, so at first, how does Sans eat all by himself without any fries or hamburgers? That I don't know, said Paps. You can't question my brother. Hey! cried Sans. I don't like that expression. Okay, okay, said Kia, trying to break up the argument. We can't do this dark news during our first DDD. It'll interrupt our good times. Finally, they went outside. Sans told the welcomer they need a table for four. The welcomer led them to their table and told them to sit down and they'll be back to take their order and drinks. Sans opened the menu and thought for a while. He was still mad at Paps rope and wanted to prove him wrong that he only ate his ketchup. Kia was worried because he saw that her boyfriend had a frown on his face. Everest looked up at her boyfriend. He was playing a switch. Lazy, she thought. She wanted Paps to talk to her. Then the waiter came to ask them for the order. Kia asked for some Fido's Feast and an orange cocktail. Everest ordered, ordered, Everest ordered a sausage pizza with liver flavored tea. Papyrus ordered a hamburger and fries. And to everyone's shock, I'll have your finest sirloin steak, please, said Sands. Why are you ordering, aren't you ordering ketchup? asked Papyrus. Because I decided I want some variety for once, said Sands. Papyrus shrugged and thought, Maybe he was still mad at me for saying that I'll eat his ketchup. While they waited for their food, Kia started first. I'm glad that I have two new friends, not to mention I'm part of a cool feet bumming trick, she said. I, I bet we really like our trick, said Everest. I'm happy that you're happy, said Paris. I'm happy that all of you are happy, said Sands. I'm also happy that we both have dogs for girlfriends. Yeah, said Kia. That's what dogs are for. We're playful. Crazy, kind-hearted, and full of love. You got that right, said Everest. Then their food was brought to their table. Kia's Fido Feast and orange cocktail, Everest sausage pizza and liver flavor tea, Papyrus's hamburger and fries, and Sans's sirloin steak. All right, one, dig in, said Sans. Everyone started eating their food. Kia and Everest ate theirs very quickly because of their huge appetite. Sans and Papyrus fat laughed and ate theirs slowly to avoid gaining weight. To avoid gaining weight. Even though they, were, they, haven't, they can't, that can happen to skeletons, they were not taking any chances. When all four of them were done, they wiped their mouths with their, with their napkins and left their table to pay their check. Check, please, said Sans when they reached the welcomer. They paid their check and then went back to, they walked back to their cottage. A very, happy en- a very happy ending to a very happy family. For now, the end.